All right, hi everyone, Tara back here. And today I am sitting with um, Justine Sly. And so Justine, thank you so much for joining me on here and sharing. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and services that you offer and that kind of stuff? Yeah, uh, I'm a dating coach. So I primarily work with women, uh, usually millennial women. Um, I have an eight week program called Date Your Way to Love. And basically what we do is we try and debunk all of your dating mindset and any blocks or beliefs that you have that is stopping you from finding the one and really work towards getting you a long lasting, healthy relationship. It's not about just dating and getting dates and, you know, um, quantity. It's definitely quality over quantity. So we're trying to set you up for great communication and figure out why you choose the partners you choose and why it hasn't worked for you in the past. And then at the end of the eight weeks, have you on your way to having a long lasting, loving relationship? Yeah. And that's like perfect for right now, because I do feel like when you said the quality over quantity is there is a lot of quantity out there, but it's really hard for people to find someone where it lasts and also not repeating their same pattern, right? Like picking the same partner mm -hmm. over and over again. So from today, what I know we're talking dating during quarantine. Um, so you mentioned that you wanted to start with what, what we can be doing right now, because a lot of people are thinking probably like, oh, I have to wait until I'm allowed out of my house or whatever the case might be. But you have a different perspective on that. Yeah, actually, I think there's so much that you can be doing just even before you decide you even want to start trying to date in quarantine. So I took some notes. If I'm looking down, I'm just reading my notes just to make sure I stay on topic here. So one thing I really love is just creating space for him. So you have all this free time. So maybe clear out a top drawer in your room to create space for when he does come into your life. It's welcoming and he feels like he is going to fit in perfectly to your space. Um, yeah, so just creating space for that person, grounding your energy in your condo or your house or wherever you are. And so yeah, I have that one. And then I have a really good manifestation tip, which I actually use to attract my fiance into my life. And I did another interview yesterday and the girl who was interviewing me, she said she did the exact same thing to attract her husband. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, so yeah, the journaling prompt is to get really clear on who he is, what he looks like, what he does, but not only just like the physical and the outer stuff, but really get clear on how you feel when you're with him. So when you do meet this person and you have those feelings, they're familiar to you and you will recognize it quickly opposed to being attracted to the lust and that yeah. like crazy love energy that you're like, oh, I think, I think this is love, but it's not because if you, when you wrote down how you wanted to feel, you felt calm, you felt respected, you felt all these things. And if that's how you feel, then you know that's not your person and you can quickly move on. Yeah, I think yeah. that's huge actually, because um, so many people think of like when they make the list of their ideal partner, right? Um, it's, you know, what they look like or what their bank account is like or their credit score or whether they have a car or a house or kids or not, or, you know, like all of that kind of stuff is very, I don't want to say materialistic, but like it's very outside of ourselves, right? But they, a lot of people don't think about what you want to feel like in the presence of who you're with, right? Which is a huge thing to think about because I feel like if you don't know that, then you, you can't always necessarily accept it. Yeah. And you tend to miss it when it comes into your yeah. life because we always want to look for that like crazy, like lust energy but that we forget that that's not actually how we want to feel. So when that good guy comes into our life and you're talking to him, you're like, mm, this isn't exciting for me enough. But when you look back to that thing that you wrote down, you said, like, I didn't want to feel anxious. I didn't want to feel these things. I wanted to feel calm. I wanted to feel, you know, in the presence of somebody who gets me and like sees my, my real soul. But if that's not, yeah, it's just another way to like be more aware when he does come into your life. So you don't let him like go past you. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's also knowing like how you want to feel loved, right? Like knowing how you want to feel loved so that when it's there or being able to express it to somebody like, yeah, like being able to communicate it to them is huge, right? Like we assume that everyone's a mind reader and they know exactly what we need, but sometimes yeah. 
your the person you're dating or your partner really appreciates it when you just tell them instead of making them guess instead of manipulating them or playing this like long game just in order to get your needs met it's a lot easier and you can do this early in dating yeah because nobody likes to have read minds nobody likes to be like played games with so it's yeah. a good way to be able to at least know what your needs are and be able to express them to somebody yeah agreed agreed um yeah so my next one is just this one's like so simple but i think we all need this right now it's just a mindset shift so before you go into it really think about like this is a time where you know i'm not stuck alone i get to work on myself i want let's say you write down on that list you know, in that journal prompt that you want somebody who cooks, who works out, but you're not doing those things. This is your opportunity to show up as that person who's going to attract that person who cooks and works out and is emotionally mature and, you know, has read the self-help books and you can speak the same language. So that's your time to, to really focus in and become that person. Yeah, that makes, that also makes sense because I see it a lot of, especially with like friends and stuff, like in my age demographic is people who are saying like, oh, I want this guy who's like fit and active, mm -hmm. but like their pastime is drinking from Thursday to Sunday and sleeping from Monday to Wednesday, you know, like, so, you know, a guy who's at the gym and taking care of his body isn't going to want to drink with you Thursday to Sunday and sleep Monday to Wednesday, right? So, exactly. yeah, so I can see how that would make a huge difference to live the lifestyle that you are wanting to create with somebody else. Exactly. And all those things that we were like too busy to do before and we felt like we didn't have time, we couldn't kind of gain control of that aspect of our lives. Like you have the time now to do it and make those changes. So yeah, that's my like little mindset tip on that one. And just like for men and women, like connecting to your masculinity or connecting to your like your femininity. So you know, for girls being able to like dance around and just like go with the flow is so feminine. So just practicing those things instead of trying to control all situations yeah, um, will really help just kind of like make you more feminine. So when you are dating, you're projecting that, that feminine energy. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of us, especially given what's going on with COVID-19 right now, are mm -hmm. feeling that pressure, right? Are feeling the weight of the world or like that anxiousness or that and i know like for myself for example when i feel that my first thing is to want to control my environment control what's happening control but there's so much that's out of our control that letting go is really one of the only options right now yeah it's like i've been kind of comparing covid 19 to trauma because it is a little bit traumatic for everybody and you kind of have to go through it the same step of trauma of like accepting allowing and then facing it head on, you know, like yeah. you're not allowing it to just like stop your life and like actually just like facing it head on and be like, Hey, this is the situation. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, okay. So that was what we can be doing right now. Um, yeah. one of the other things that you wanted to chat about, was that everything on your list? Yeah. Or I just had like one more thing would be, yeah. you could read the five love languages. It's just such a great staple for everybody in a relationship. And it's like, I actually handed it to my fiance like three weeks into dating. I was like, read this and tell me your love languages. So yeah. if you are, yeah. Yeah. If you're dating um, online, there's actually a quiz online that you can take too that um, helps you figure it out if yeah. you can't from reading the book. Somebody told me last night there's actually an app. Really? Yeah. I have to look it up. That. Yeah. yeah. Because that's huge. I have to agree with you. Knowing yours and knowing like your partners. And it's also something too that you can put you know, when you, when you talked about writing the list of what you're looking for in a partner, right? Like there's some, I know, like there's some love languages that are harder for people to express. Like if that makes sense, like, um, yeah. like if you're not a very physical person, but your partner's first love language is physical touch, right? But yours is at the very bottom and you don't really like to do that. It's going to be really hard because you're always going to have to be stepping outside of your comfort to do that right so if you're more comfortable with one of them acts of service or whatever like whatever it is to put that as part of like you know my partner accepts love in this way mm -hmm. so that you're knowing also, that in your deal breakers it could also be part of yeah. your your five deal breakers is like if you're really not comfortable 
with physical touch and that's something you don't want, well, you're probably not going to have a successful relationship with somebody whose top one is physical touch because you're always going to be, you know, combating that. But yeah, so it could also be in more becoming self-aware in part of your love languages, in part of your five deal breakers. Yeah, because a lot of times people don't recognize that, right? Like if, if your big driver is your career and right now, you know, like in your career is now and will be a huge part of your life, but you're with somebody who's got quality time as their number one, that can be really difficult because then you're going to, you know, they're always going to be seeking to have that quality time with you, but your big driver in life is your career, right? So you can see how that can cause a lot of um, turmoil turmoil yeah I was gonna say dysfunction but that's not the word I was looking for yeah like turmoil in in a relationship so I think like getting so clear on those things saves you in the long run when it comes to dating and it's something you could always be checking back in with because in different seasons of your lives it does change right like acts of service might not be important to you now but when you have kids and you yeah he wakes up in the middle of the night and cleans all the bottles for you you're going to be like, oh, I love you. Like, yeah. that is really huge, right? Like, yeah. so it, it does change. So it is good to be really, like, to actually buy the book and constantly be checking back in. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. Um, so the next thing that we were going to chat about is why, in your perspective, why right now is the best time to start date, actually dating. Yeah, I think it's actually such a cool time to start dating. And, like, People have been finding love online since the beginning of the internet. So like it is a hundred percent possible. I mean, I don't know if you guys have watched Love is Blind, but people are finding love through a pod. You can do it here. Like you can do it online. You can do it in quarantine. Trust me. (laughs) Um, But yeah, this is why I think it's just such a cool time. First and foremost, there's way more people on the apps than there ever has been before. True. So there's people who were too busy before. (laughs) Sorry, my cat is over everything in my bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she's fully trashing my bathroom right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's way more people, people who were too busy before or just like apps weren't for them are now on the app. So if you've been on the apps for a really long time and your person wasn't there, then this could be your timing yeah. because there's so many more people and there's so many more people who have time for it. You never yeah. had the time before. And with a so little let me ask of- you a question though, real quick. If, so you're referring to the apps in your perspective, which ones are the top ones to be on? If you're going to choose. Yeah. Um, definitely Bumble and Hinge. Okay. Um, they're the best ones just because with Bumble, if you're somebody, if you're a girl, you don't like having all of the messages from guys, just like the small talk, you get to create the conversation starters and you have to initiate the conversation, okay. which is really good because with, with like Tinder and stuff, um, usually the people who aren't as successful on Tinder will move to Bumble. Right. So the quality is a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and so Hinge is great because they also have a lot of really good prompts. So Hinge has like a lot of good, real like, um, conversation starters so that like you're not doing the, like, how was your day over and over and over and again, you can actually have like real conversations a lot quicker. Right. Um, there are other ones too, for more like elite people. So, you know, your job, your status, all that. So there are other options depending on what you're looking for. Okay. um, I also say there's no need to pay for a dating app. There's like paying for it. There's no necessary, it's not necessary at all. The only one I would ever say to pay for it would be Bumble has an upgrade where it goes through, it does all the swiping for you. And it just basically, you have to match with people, but it just shows you the people who's already matched with you. Uh, okay. so you, you a hundred percent will match with every person you match with. Gotcha. So that's for like busy people, but I mean, not everyone's super busy right now. So I don't think there's any need to pay for an app. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So back to why this is the best time to start dating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot more people on the apps and just in general, um, you're forced to talk about deeper things because you're removing the aspect of physical touch and you're removing, and this is another reason to know your love language. If you're like, Hey, my love language is physical touch. This is really hard for me. You can be honest. You can be open with them about it. Um, but yeah, you're removing that distraction from your like sorry my cat is literally attacking okay. my camera we're all working from home so I'm <laughs> just, my dog haven't started freaking out so yeah it's a bit interesting um yeah so you were you're removing all that distraction the pressure of sex the pressure of we were talking about this before just like you know having one too many drinks at dinner and like maybe you know 
slipping on your boundaries a little bit. You're able to really focus on the task at hand and its communication and people are craving connection more than ever right now. Um, so you're able to talk about deeper things to like to get that connection. You have to go deeper. Yeah. So if you are connecting with somebody, you're going to get to those serious conversations a lot faster. And, yeah. and it's okay to be honest about how this is to be vulnerable in the situation because everyone's in the same situation. So yeah. becoming a little bit more vulnerable about it because there, are, there is no rule book on this. No one's ever done it before. So it's okay to, yeah, to just get vulnerable with them. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I just like have a tip for men and women too. Like if you're using the apps, get off the apps quickly, get onto a FaceTime date as like men are very, very visual. So they need to see you. Mm -hmm. So they be like, they're going to lose interest if you're just texting or you're just, you know, talking through the app. So you do need to get in, in front of each other and create that, start creating that connection early on. So you're not yeah. wasting your time just, you know, texting. texting, texting. Yeah. 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 Especially too, like in this day and age of like catfishing and stuff, right? Like people want to know that you're like a real person, right? And that those pictures aren't just pictures you stole off of. Exactly. And Facebook. you can like hold a conversation without thinking for 10 minutes or for texting them back. And, yeah. and like, and for men, like you need to like be courting women still, but you still have to court them. You still have to make the first move to get onto the apps and you still have to, you know, make those little moments special and you still have to, you know, take it seriously. And mm -hmm. women, you still like, you know, even try like, I mean, don't get full glam, but take a little bit of effort, you know, put a little bit of makeup on, do, you know, get prepared as if you were actually putting the energy into going into a real date. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Plus it makes you feel better too, right? Like, more confident yeah like more course. willing to have a face-to-face -face conversation if you feel like you you know look decent yeah like I had um a client the other day and they were getting dressed up as if they were going on like their second date to like a nicer restaurant so they were like gonna get dressed up and have wine and you know make it fun and you get to like this is another thing that's so cool you get to see how creative somebody is yeah and if you can have fun with like literally nothing yeah because like I was even saying this to one of my friends yesterday, like I was like, she's telling about all the fun she's been having with her boyfriend. I was like, isn't it, you're really seeing that how important it is to be with your best friend right now. Yeah. Because or else you would just be bored. Yeah. Agreed. Cause like the relationship spark through all this, isn't going to be there every second of every day when you're working from home together, you're doing everything together. You like yeah. kind of want, you need them to be your best friend as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Because like that lust, I mean, everyone knows about the honeymoon phase and how, you know, that goes away and it'll go away really quickly when you're mm -hmm. um, with each other 24 seven all day, yeah. every day. Right. And so it's really important to find somebody who you can be quarantined with and survive it. Totally. Yeah. Like you have to be able to have fun in this, like in these moments and you have to be able to like hold a conversation with them. Yeah. Because yeah. like everybody, we're all running out of things to watch. So we kind of have to talk to each other now. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Yeah. And we're yeah, all like everyone's totally seen great. Tiger King, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so do you have any other tips or information that you are wanting to share with people right now? Um Yeah, I think it's just I would just say if you are struggling right now, it's okay. A lot of people are people, you know, it does feel like a setback and that is okay. Um, and like I said, like the, you know, kind of going through this as if it was a trauma, like it's okay to go through the grief stage. It's okay to go through like the woe is me stage. And now, but like now we need to start coming out of this and realizing that we can make steps forward and you can find your person. People find it in the craziest ways. So this isn't, this isn't like out of the world. Like I met my fiance on Bumble. It's totally doable. Tara connected with her husband through Facebook again. So yeah. yeah, but with that being said, exes are coming out of the, out of everywhere. So yeah. just because you're lonely right now, doesn't mean that you should go back to that ex. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Because I mean, for a lot of people, that's what's comfortable, right? Like you've been there, done that. So you know what to expect. 
And sometimes that can be a little bit more um, appealing in the moment than going to find somebody new, right? Because you have a certain comfort, even though you know it's not what you want, you've already been through it. But it is, it can be a draw in a time like this where you're already feeling a little bit vulnerable and a little bit scared. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that is a good, it's, it's definitely been a trend and like, we've been in quarantine long enough where people have like done like going back to the X thing and then are now coming to me and being like, Oh, I did that. And like, that obviously didn't work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll hit the and, you know, like, you know, all that, yeah. all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if somebody wanted to reach out to you for, you know, advice or for your program or, you know, to find out if what they're doing makes sense or whatever the case might be what is the best way to find your information yeah you can find me at instagram at justine sly dot inc okay. and all my information there if you go to the link in my bio there is like you can book a discovery call with me and that's totally free as well as like my lead page and like all that fun stuff is there we also host groups but i mean we're obviously not doing that right now but yeah i'm also going to be adding in a Facebook group and it's going to be called not your average BFF brunch and it's just for mostly for single women who are dating in quarantine and just want a outlet to just like share their experiences because I understand like my fiance works shift work and he's still working because he's a first responder I'm feeling super lonely it's been eight days now of me being alone so I'm like okay I need to like I'm feeling this people must be feeling so lonely right now so I kind of just want to be able to give back so it's just pick my brain, girl chats, um, dating advice is all going to be in there. And that's totally free just to kind of get back to some of this pressure and the are feeling right now. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you. And I'm going to um, just say this, that when, when I do post this, like your information is going to be there. So people will be able to find it. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'm sure we will chat again soon. Okay, great. Bye, Tara. Bye.